Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, as you can see in the background, or rather as you cannot see in the background, we finally finished my move and therefore I have my green screen back. Finally, we can record semi-professional videos again here on this channel. I still have to adjust the lighting a little bit, but other than that, it looks pretty good for my standard. Let me know in the comment section if you like this format better or if you like the windowed format better. And now to celebrate the new setup, we're gonna revisit Dr. Zucker Nike today with his video, White Sister Found Prophet Muhammad's Peace Be Upon Him, Name in the Bible, emotional video by Dr. Zucker Nike. As usual, I haven't watched the video yet, but I'm gonna make an assumption. I believe they're gonna talk about the Song of Solomon because Ahmed Didat was the teacher of Zucker Nike. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. With no further ado, let's have a look. Mics. We have a non-Muslim. Solid beard, the brother. Okay, go ahead, sister. Salam alaikum. I'd like to ask if you could shed some light on a verse in the Bible. It's the Old Testament, Solomon chapter 5, verse 16. It's the Hebrew text. Hiko mamitikim, wikulo mahamadim, zidude wazara'i baine Jerusalem. I know that in English, mahamadim has been translated to altogether lovely. What I'd like to ask is why do Christians not know that Muhammad has been spoken about in the Bible? Guys, I have to clarify this once and for all. If we do a simple Google search, we can find the Song of Songs. The Song of Songs, also called the Cantisel of Cantisels, or the Song of Solomon, is an erotic poem that is one of the Megalot found in the last section of the Tanakh, known as the Ketuvim. And even if we look into Encyclopedia Britannica, which is a reputable source, we find Song of Solomon, also called Cantisel of Cantisels, or Song of Songs, an Old Testament book that belongs to the third section of the biblical canon, known as the Ketuvim or Writings. In the Hebrew Bible, the Song of Solomon stands with Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes and Esther and with them makes up the Megillot, five scrolls that are read on various religious festivals of the Jewish year. This book is a festal scroll for Pasha, Passover, which celebrates the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. But the interesting part is when we scroll down. The book, whose author is unknown, Solomon's name is a later edition, is a collection of love poems spoken alternately by a man and a woman. There is no coherent story in the book. A number of the poems systematically describe the beauty and excellence of the beloved. The Song of Solomon has received various interpretations, the most common being allegorical, dramatic, cultic and literal. So guys, this is not to take anything away from Muhammad's prophethood, but we cannot apply a double standard here. If you look at Ahmed Didat, he said that you find eroticism even within the Bible. Now we have a love letter that is erotic of sorts, but we're going to use it to prove the prophethood of Muhammad. This is a double standard and this would be hypocrisy. As I mentioned previously, coming from an Orthodox Christian perspective, I've seen Christian misinterpret Jewish scripture, even Buddhist scripture, Taoist scripture, and they try to find Jesus within those scriptures. Islam stands strong on its own. It doesn't need reaffirmation from the Bible. When the sister asked the question, she's given the Hebrew of the verse of the Bible from Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, which says, Hikkum amitakim, vikulli muhammadim, zaidudi zairai baina Jerusalem. 
which means sister only translated one word it means he's most sweet he's altogether lovely he's my beloved he's my friend o daughters of jerusalem this is the complete translation of the hebrew verse she quoted and exactly right o daughters of jerusalem she's speaking about her beloved it's a love letter and it says hikuma mitakim bi kulli muhammadim muhammadim in the semitic languages when you give respect you add him to it like allah is for god elohim is respect for god the same thing to the name muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they add him and it means it says muhammadim so if you read the original text the name of muhammad peace be upon him is even mentioned in the bible sister is asking then why don't the christians believe in prophet muhammad peace be upon him sister you should ask this question to the christians i asked this question to hundreds of christians alhamdulillah some of them accepted islam most of them did not so i agree with you that the name of prophet muhammad peace be upon him is mentioned in the scriptures of most of the major world religions including bible and as i mentioned earlier that not only is he mentioned by name he is even prophesied in various different parts of the bible those statements i cannot clarify yet i watched one video where dr zakir naik talked about buddhism and how prophet muhammad was mentioned within buddhism on the other religions i haven't watched anything yet so i'm looking forward to see them in the future god willing as i in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 18 in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 19 in the book of isaiah chapter number 29 verse number 12 in song of solomon chapter 5 verse 16 is also prophesied in the new testament in the gospel of john chapter 14 verse number 16 Gospel of John chapter number 15 verse 26 Gospel of John chapter 16 verse number 7 Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 12 to 14 in several places sister so that's what i asked to the christian if it's clearly with this i agree not by name but there was definitely a mention of a prophet yet to come and the jews were waiting for a new prophet to come that is fact to mention about the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him then why don't they believe in him those christians who really study and analyze and do research alhamdulillah they accept islam the others who do not want to accept the truth and say oh i have been a christian for 40 years now you want me to change my religion so they are afraid many a time the ego comes in between sure i agree with that absolutely we should be truthful in our pursuit of truth Obviously anything else would be hypocritical if we are looking for truth and we find the truth then we have to accept it no matter where we find it and this is exactly what I'm doing and I hope that you guys can see it I'm doing my own research and by doing my own research I can clearly see that the song of Solomon is not about prophet Muhammad many a time the society comes in between many a time what my okay. friends tell me what would my customers tell me so these things prevent them from accepting the beauty of Islam what they fail to realize they wouldn't mind offending the creator just to please their family and their friends pleasing our creator is more important than pleasing your family and friends 100%. so those who realize the importance of creator importance of almighty god alhamdulillah they accept islam absolutely i totally agree with the statement and even if we look into the teachings of jesus and muslims will say that jesus was a muslim somebody that submitted his will to god jesus said as well to his followers that there will be brother against brother son against father that he will divide families if they follow him and this is what i believe people don't truly understand when we're talking about religion when we're talking about the path to god the straight path then we are speaking about a path that will divide people. people we're not talking about a liberal all inclusive hey whatever works for you bro ideology no we're speaking about truth and falsehoods and if there is a truth that truth will of course divide you from the rest of society if you look into society you will see people being misled you will see sin everywhere when you then decide to walk the path of god you will be a stranger to that society that's totally normal since i would like to ask you that are you a christian or are you a muslim i've been studying islam for about 6 months mashallah so do you believe now that there is one god i do 
Do you believe Jesus is God? Peace be upon him. No, I don't. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the messenger of God? Yes. Mashallah. So if you believe there's one God, you believe Prophet Muhammad, messenger of God, and according to me, you are six months of research. Yes. <laughs> Your six months of research have brought you to the truth, sister. I'm actually getting goosebumps. Oh, I didn't hear you. Those are tears of joy. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> when a person realizes the truth, that's what even Quran says that when people hear the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the moment the believer, tears roll from their eyes. So these are tears of happiness and joy that you have found the truth. As Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, seek ye the truth and the truth shall free you. So I believe the truth has freed you today, sister. Your six months of research has brought you to the truth. Sister, would you like to accept Islam? <laughs> sister, would you like to accept Islam? Yes. Is anyone forcing you? Absolutely not. You're doing out of your own free will? Yes. Inshallah, I say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. <laughs> Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Barasuluhu. Barasuluhu. It's a pretty epic shahada, man. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. That is the messenger. And servant of Allah. And the servant of Allah. Servant, servant of Allah. Mashallah, sister, you are a Muslim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as He has guided you, may Allah make you a source to guide the other non-Muslims towards Islam. And I pray to Allah to grant you the best in this world and the That's Akhirah good. to grant you Jannah paradise. Inshallah. All right, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely beautiful ending there, I have to say, gave me goosebumps. She took the Shahada in the most epic way possible with Dr. Zakhar Naik amongst thousands of people. You could clearly see that it was heartfelt and that it was honest. And that's the most important thing. It has to be honest. In our pursuit of truth, we have to be honest. And this is why I'm going to repeat it one last time. Islam is strong on its own. It doesn't need to stand on falsehood especially not if you accept it as the truth. So taking the Song of Solomon, a love letter, an erotic poem as evidence for Prophet Muhammad, you're discrediting the message of Islam, in my opinion. I'm not a scholar here, but I read the whole Bible and I read the whole Quran and I know about the Song of Solomon and I reread it one more time just to see it in context. And it doesn't take a genius to see that the Song of Solomon is not talking about the Muhammad that is found in the Quran and that is totally all right. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. If you want to further support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.